Hey guys and welcome to this video where I am going to be essentially running through and reviewing a little bit my new Nikon Z5. Uh, so this is the first image that I managed to take. Essentially we are on a photography walk. Um, I do apologise for the uh, video not being the best. Uh, this is not a proper proper GoPro and so the stabilisation is a bit iffy. However, I wanted to talk about the camera itself and some of the photos I managed to get such as this one of some nice little leaves with the sun poking through. Um, and yeah, I, I would have to say that this is the first time I had to use the camera um, and I'm pretty happy with, with uh, the outcomes of it. Um, the photos seemed really, really crisp and uh, it's good that I actually managed to get out and take some photos with the camera because obviously, as you would imagine, the more you use any camera, uh, the better photos you get with it. So obviously I want to hit the ground running with this camera uh, and I think I managed to snap some very, very nice photos. Uh, I did have a couple of small problems um, with the camera itself. Um, I think it's it's really, really strange, um, or at least it was for the first couple of minutes, getting used to the digital viewfinder. Uh, you can see me there using the flip up screen, which was quite helpful as well, um, and is a feature of quite a few of the Nikon cameras at this current point in time. Um, however, the Z50 over the Z5 has a full vlogger camera, which flips down all the way underneath. But yeah, as you can see, some of these photos are really, really nice. Oh, this is uh, this is just a point uh, a point to prove that essentially with uh, this shot that I tried taking here, I tried to essentially follow the runner and get some nice shots. However, I was uh, in aperture mode and not in shutter priority mode. Um, and so it's just something that I really, really should have thought a little bit about of. Um, and yeah, it just, it is what it is. Uh, these next few shots, um, or these next shots, um, the edited one will come up in a second. Uh, but these shots are from one of my favourite spots in, in Viola to take photos. Um, I really, really want to get some nice light trails and stuff here. Um, and actually, this is the reason why I'm, why I'm uh, pointing this out. One of the reasons why I bought the camera is for low light photography. As you may be aware, uh, mirrorless cameras are actually a lot better at performing in low light. Um, you can see my feet here because the yeah the GoPro is not positioned very well at all. Um, but yeah, this is uh, I bought this camera to perform better than my Nikon D7500, um, just for for night photography and stuff like that, and also uh, partly for size as well. I carry around a lot of gear. Anyway, here is the photo um, or my favorite photo of the shots that I managed to get. Um, I do have a few others with uh, cars and stuff in, but they just didn't quite come out as nicely as this one. Um, one thing I actually wanted to mention as well is the battery life of this thing. So this thing advertises as being good for up to 350, 370 photos, I believe, on one battery charge. While I was out, I was turning the camera off and on again to conserve battery. Um, I think it conserves battery. I don't know, to be completely honest, it could make it all the much worse. However, I took around 150 photos. So you would expect the camera's battery to maybe be a little bit worse off. Here, this photo, I love this photo. I think it came out really, really nicely. Um, a little bit grainy, um, but yeah, could have been worse. Um, so, but yeah, so the battery you would expect to maybe be a third depleted. Um, however, it was still showing as pretty much a full battery. So it may have been, uh, yeah, it may have been slightly off, um, being a third off, but it is what it is. Now this photo here, um, I actually want to mention, so you can maybe see at the bottom of the, the main tree, you can see there's actually somebody sat there. They were actually slightly covered by uh, one of the branches or one of the leaves, um, but I just wasn't able to uh, capture, capture it properly. Um, I was looking at the screen and not looking through the digital viewfinder. Now, uh, before we see the result of this next shot and you're just staring at the wall, uh, as the reminder has asked you to do, please do make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help and I really, really appreciate it. And you reward the beautiful photo. Um, just of a random mushroom that I found. I think this photo looked really, really good. Um, and this is less about the, the photos um, and uh, more about the fact that I had some very, very nice doggos sort of come and say hello to me. Um, I think I would have offered to maybe try and take some nice photos. Um, however, this is in Denmark and my Danish is not amazing just yet. 
Um, but yeah, some, some other thoughts about the camera while I quickly position myself for this next shot, uh, where I found there's like this uh, public auditorium type thing, um, where I thought it might be quite cool to view the wave apartments uh, through the open door. Um, but yeah, the camera itself, um, I felt, like I said earlier, I found it a little bit weird to get used to the digital viewfinder, um, but I felt like once after about 10-15 minutes, um, I managed to get the hang of it, and here is the photo. As you can see, absolutely lovely, really warm, summery, autumn-y tones as well, which is nice. Um, and then I actually really like the way that uh, this this architecture looks for this uh, like public auditorium. Um, and so I managed to take this really nice shot um, here of the like, reflecting sunset as well, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, now this next shot uh, is of just some people, some silhouettes um, along this little, I say pier, but I'm not 100% sure ex exactly what you would call it. Again, using the viewfinder through my eye, um, I felt more comfortable doing that. Um, however, I completely understand that for, for some photos, the screen is actually better. Um, but yeah, so my, again, going back slightly, my initial thoughts with this camera, yeah, they it, it's pretty good. Um, I challenged myself to only use the kit lens uh, that I actually got, which is tw a 24 to 50 millimeter lens, um, which goes from, I think, f.2 to, or f.4.2, uh, sorry, um, to 6.3, uh, or that's, that's what the stop on the camera is. Now this shot, I actually really, really like it poking through the uh, uh, through the leaves here, um, and I was kind of hoping that there would be some sort of like ducks. They usually are sat on the rock, so I may play around with this photo and maybe Photoshop a duck in sat on top of there. Um, and before we get to this photo again, I'm going to remind you to like and subscribe. And again, your reward is this beautiful photo. Came out a little bit grainier than I wanted it to, and I almost got hit by a few cars on the way back uh, over to the other side to take a photo of this fisherman. Um, I think it's a fisherman. Uh, it could be a fisherwoman, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I managed to take, um, I got a little bit closer, just purely because again, the zoom range on this isn't amazing. It's only 24 to 50, but I got a, a nice picture of this, uh, we'll go with Fisherman um, here, uh, hopefully trying to catch something really, really nice. Um, and I'm actually stood here where quite a lot of the Fisherman um, stand, uh, and I managed to get two really nice photos here. Uh, one of which is this one, um, again with a really soft focus. I feel like this lens, and especially obviously it being a mirrorless camera, could give some really, really nice bokeh. And obviously I came out at sunset, and now this is the sort of low light type of situation that I'm talking about. Um, and I think the camera performed really, really well. Um, I haven't shot this thing full like dark in a city just yet. Um, this is probably the closest I'm gonna get for a little while. Um, you can see me here trying to take a few different images to stitch together later. Um, however, the shot that I actually go with is from a puddle, uh, which you'll see in just a second. And I think the uh, the texture of the ground worked really, really nicely in this image. And I love the purple tones too. But yeah, so as I was saying, um, with uh, oh, it's very, very dark on this bit of video. I really am sorry. Uh, let's cut to the last photo I take, which is again through a reflection, and again the texture on the floor. Um, really does sort of help bring a little bit of uh, salt to the image, a little bit of uh, grain, a little bit of realness to it. Alrighty, so we have talked a little bit about the battery life, the image quality itself, and also we talked a little bit about the screen and the kit lens as well. Uh, like I have mentioned previously, and you can actually check out um, the unboxing of this camera as well as the FTZ kit and obviously the stock lens or the kit lens uh, in a, another video of mine if you so wish. But some other things I just want to mention outside of the video that we actually did. Um, changing the lenses and stuff like that, um, I've been playing around with it as well. Like the thing, it works very, very nicely. With my D7500, there is a little bit of almost like a, like a, it doesn't unlock the lenses so smoothly, but with this, it is very, very, very smooth. 
Um, the other thing I would like to mention as well is that on the kit lens for my D3300, which I still use on my D7500 sometimes, uh, actually has a button to uh, release the extension um, on, the, on the lens. Um, but with this, you literally just twist a little bit and it will actually click into place there. Um, which is uh, quite nice. Um, I didn't really see the point in having a button on the initial thing anyway, back with the D3300, but it's just a nice little addition as well. Something else that I wanted to point out as well is that the back of the camera, the uh, actual viewfinder, uh, sticks out by quite a bit in my opinion. Um, I can see by the, the, the design that there's not really a lot they can do about this. However, that when you are sort of looking, your your cheek isn't actually touching the screen, so that's good, which it sometimes is with, uh, for example, the D3300 or the D7500, in my experience at the very least. Uh, but obviously when putting it in your bag, because the back doesn't lie flat, it wobbles slightly, which is a little bit strange. I know it's very like nitty gritty sort of thing, but there we go. The uh, dual SD card slots are absolutely amazing. Um, I really, really like the fact that you can essentially just back up onto one or you can have an overload if you're on a longer trip or something like that. However, I have recently had a SD card corrupt and it is very, very annoying. So having the dual SD card shot, shot having the dual SD card slot just means that my images are just that little bit safer, which is awesome. Uh, the other things that I wanted to mention as well is that this dial on the top has a lot less options than, um, for example, my D3300 and my D7500. And that is purely because this is a professional grade camera and doesn't have predetermined settings like, for example, portrait or landscape. It has auto. Um, it doesn't have auto without flash like the D7500 does. However, you can essentially just disable the flash in one of the menus. That's another thing I wanted to mention as well with the menus. Um, it is pretty much exactly the same as the previous Nikon cameras that I have. Uh, oh look, it's me. Um, um, but yeah, so the other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that the focus um, like selector stick um, is up here, whereas previously I would use the uh, dial button or obviously the touch screen. I would use the dial button on my D3300 to select the focus and the screen with the D7500. It's actually a little bit distracting. I'm just gonna point this up. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that the display changer has actually moved from, or at least in my experience, moved from the D7500 from over at the over at the side here. It's a little bit weird doing this. Um, and it has actually moved at the top. I think that is a probably a good idea to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, like I said, the batteries, um, they are good um, as far as I can tell. I will probably try and test um, uh, the battery a little bit more extensively on maybe a longer trip. Um, but I think that for, for shorts, I think I was out for about an hour and a half um, and didn't experience any battery issues at all. And it was a bit cold. Batteries obviously don't perform as well in the cold. There we go. Um, but yeah, like I said, I will do a full proper test as and when I can. The last thing I want to talk about is the ergonomics of this camera. You can hold it very, very nicely. I typically hold cameras like this or like this, depending on obviously like whether or not I want portrait or landscape to start photos. Um, but yeah, the ergonomics are very, very nice. I do have quite large hands. Um, and so although this camera is smaller, it still feels snug in my hand. It doesn't feel too big or too small. A little bit heavier than I expected. I do have uh, my D7500 over here. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it feels a bit lighter than for example, the traditional cameras. Um, and actually we can do a size comparison now um, and you can see that uh, that, yeah, it's it's a reasonably similar size, um, unless you look down like that, you can see essentially that this this mirrorless camera here, uh, mirrorless camera here, uh, again doing this on screen is a bit weird, uh, is a lot thinner. And obviously the these are both kit lenses, uh, which are both around the same size. You can see essentially massively that it is a lot. Shorter. So yeah, if you, for example, are maybe backpacking or something like that, um, and you want to save on space, then this something like this would probably be a little bit better. 
Um, or obviously if you're a photographer and you're planning on carrying a bit less kit, then that's great. However, the FDZ kit, um, which I bought with the camera, which is here, takes up a bit of space. <laughs> this is how big it is. It's a little bit chunky. Um, and I'll do a full review of the FDZ kit at some point in the future. However, because of that little bit of chunkiness, stop zipping. Uh, because of that little bit of chunkiness, uh, if you do decide to bring it and you don't have mirrorless lenses or extra mirrorless lenses, then that will obviously take up the space which you would save with bringing the other camera. Just something to think about. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, have you used one of the Z5s at all? If so, let me know your opinions and stuff like that down below in the comments. Um, I really do hope that you liked this video um, and enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions or anything like that, be sure to drop me a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want more videos like this in the future, such as photo walks and that sort of thing, let me know. Why not? But yeah, be sure to like and subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.